We return here on Spot on Sports with Danny Martin, uh, owner of Geek Leaks, joining us here. Bruce T. Bruce Taylor next to me. Uh, trouble off the court for the Mavs, but this time it's in the front office. Uh, as Sports Illustrated dropped the story earlier this week with uh, sexual allegations. Uh, over to Derma Ursay, the former CEO and former employee for Under Armour also. Um, sexual allegations came out saying that he had contact or was abusive towards the women in the work office. Um, John, Den John Denny, excuse me, uh, you have some type of relationship with Mark Cuban. Uh, what's to make of all of this news and uh, you know the the flurries sure. and stuff and the rumors going around what's to make of everything that's going on with the match? for sure so i think one of the biggest things that's been spoken a lot on espn is the company culture um he has a he has a thought process um he has the same kind of thought process as those in san francisco i've spent a couple of years in san francisco and it's kind of laid back but um you it's laid back because you have the mind state to where you know that everybody is working towards one kind of goal so you don't have to put so much pressure or put so much those guidelines onto the individual because you know they're going to step it up. You know, they have that mindset. Right. So if you don't have to, you feel like in a if you move that way within a corporation, um, everything will be lax and you, you're you supposed to get better productivity from there. Right. Um, but there's always going to be individuals within it that, you know, push the limitations. Um, and sometimes they push it over and they get in trouble. And I think this is one step of what we're seeing right now in regards to what's happening in the actual company. And um, we're, we're talking about Ursa per se. Mm -hmm. uh, was there before Mark Cuban actually bought the team, had been the CEO for some time. So uh, was a trusted individual with they handled their finances, with brought in a lot of money as far as uh, what they were trying to do. I know he did something with the, mm -hmm. the airport. I want to say about money out there. I, I'm not too for sure. I, I honestly want to let some more of the reporting come out. But I do yeah. know he was there prior to Mark Cuban. He was under Rosa, who was the uh, owner of the of the team. But even in '98, it was a sexual misconduct um, six week um, investigation with the same guy, right? Um, which basically caused them to basically make a stricter code of uh, conduct, basically for yeah. him. Um, but it never got resolved. This was back in '98. So the fact that these allegations are coming out 20 years later, um, it's a big issue, man. I mean, you think about 20 years of working with women, and uh, they, they're saying that some women, um, they left the sporting arena altogether because they just felt like this is how business was conducted right. all over the NBA, yeah. um, which is not cool, man. Uh, um, sure. I just feel like uh, we all have mothers. We all have a sister or grandma. You know, you have a female. We, we come from a female. And it's just not right uh, to, to come to work or for a woman to come to work and uh, they feel um, just the, the anxiety goes up when, you, when you're at your desk. Um, shouldn't be touching, inappropriate touching or saying things out of line. For sure. Just come to work and be professional. And it's not that this allegation is so um, so crazy. I mean, you got, got guys from the NFL Network who've been fired, um, some Fox reporters. These things are, the Me Too movement is out right. now with these women in the um, movie industry saying that they've been getting uh, done like this. Larry Nassar. But, yeah. yeah, Larry Nassar. But we have, as men, we have to be responsible and understand that. You know, we have to be barbaric like this. And I know, you know? And I know we put it, men per se, in, in the workplace. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of pressure on women. For one, first of all, when you're working with a team like the Dallas Mavericks, right. that's a, uh, it's a high-paying job. You know, it's a good place to work at, mm -hmm. and for women and you're dealing in sports, it's tough for them to to get jobs like these. You know, right. they have families that they have to feed, so mm -hmm. they get caught in having to deal with a man that's sexually abusing them and keeping their job. Basically, after both incidents, it was uh, found that he couldn't be around any female employees without a, a escort, yeah. wow. which is crazy. Yeah. You're a grown man coming into your work environment every day. You have to be there every day and I'm pretty sure there's a female co-worker in there somewhere you can't be in there without a chaperone right? it's like you're a child and Come and, on, man. and Danny you know with the relationship that you do have with Mark uh, and this is one thing that I want you to kind of bring to the people who's watching on live right now and who will be watching your, you know the recorded side of this uh, what do they need to know about Marcus when you look at the Mavericks 
they're kind of two stances that existed. One right. with Ursay, you know, running the business side, and Mark was more analytical mm -hmm. on the road with the team, more hands on with them. Right. Uh, right. He so. is a he is a guy whose eyes are on a lot of places. Yeah, so what sure. is it that they need to know about Mark before they try to point fingers and say, well, he wasn't paying attention or he should have known or, or whatever the case is? Like, yeah, you're right, though. His eyes are, are in a lot of places. Um, mm -hmm. But that doesn't that doesn't give a pass to an individual. Right. Like, you set your company culture to where they everybody knows that your eyes are in a lot of places. Mm -hmm. So yes. if your eyes are on a lot of places, you're expected to see some things like this, you know? Um, don't give a pat. I can guarantee you, he he would say the same thing, you know, yeah, right. um, from that dynamic. As he stated, you know, he sta stated like, hey, you know, this is something I have to take care of. This is on me, uh, and you respect that within his character. Right. Um, a lot of individuals come come around, a lot of mistakes, and you expect individuals, you respect individuals, especially from an owner perspective, that can say, hey, I bred this type of culture. Um, I didn't think that it was going. I was spending more time trying to give passes, yeah. uh, but I guarantee you, I won't go through that again. And, and, and definitely a, a bad call. Much respect to Mark Keeman as an owner. But definitely a bad call with the whole Earl K. Sneed thing. After the first time, I mean, I, can I, I have to cut him off. Yeah. And because, I can see after the first time. Yeah, like, but, like, and, but in a sense, you're dealing with domestic you know, abuse. And this is in yeah. a workplace where other women are. And I understand that he wasn't aware or, from, from what I know, of the the sexual abuse that was going on inside there, but the, the domestically too, mm -hmm. when both of those in your office, the well, culture is the, the dynamics of the culture has changed. Well, I think he said with the um the beat writer situation that he didn't even read, which was still a mistake on his the account. contract. He didn't right. even read the um the pro what he was on probation for or the the police report. He just kind of made it a okay, take him to get a uh, counseling, mm -hmm. and uh, we'll work on it from there. He kind of had a. A more of a personal relationship with the guy because his his idea of it was let's not throw him out into the world because he may not get another job let's try to help him sure. with, with inside the, the company and family that I've built here it's a call you know right he, he saves his individual's life you know in regards to his, his job and then he's loyal to you within your company forever you know true true and it's all about you know ties just and business. This one. <laughs> right and it, it, it's just you know it's just like i said because this story look think about it though guys like i said the first time with with with, with um ursa the first time you ever heard about this story or even these allegations were in 98. right i was six years old in 98. so think about it. if somebody would have took you serious back in 98 before the millennium hit we wouldn't even have this story today so you know i is it on is it on cuban i mean yeah because you wound up taking over the the, the company but uh, like I said, if, if the CEO, I mean the owner before Cuban would have said, hey, we're going to have to get rid of you, man. In 98, you wouldn't even heard about any of these stories in 2018. The NBA waits to see what uh, the head Adam Silver would do uh, yeah. concerning the Mavs. And, you know, there's, you know, rumors about the whole tanking situation. Mm -hmm. and, and, oh, not rumors. They slap him across the head with $600,000 fine. Yeah, so. Don't talk about and, losing. And, and <laughs> peace everyone who's listening to note that Adam Silver can remove owners for uh, an extended amount of time. He can take draft Donald Sterling. Donald Sterling happened to yeah, him. Y'all were so, mad about racism. Right. Be mad about sexualism. Yes. Uh, that's a word. <laughs> so we'll, we'll continue to uh, keep you guys updated on that. Coming up next, we get into the man. The myth. The, hour. the, myth, the legend. legend. Sure. Everything in between. Danny Martin. <laughs> Geek Leaks and Esports. What's going on with that? Stay tuned. That's coming up next here on Spot on Sports.